that Quarasho uh, has bridge Kokla. Uh, the simplest version of a Butler matrix is also known as a 3B quadrature hybrid coupler. Uh, the 3DB quadrature hybrid coupler is a four port device with two inputs and two outputs. Uh, an input signal is uh, split equally between the two ports, uh, but one of the outputs has a 90 uh, degree phase shift uh, due to the additional distance it has to travel. What basically what this what this means that in the coupler uh, we have four ports, two input ports, and two output ports. Uh, in the two input ports, uh, one of them is technically isolated because it's only one of the input ports that a signal is fed through, and there are two output ports uh, from which the signal comes out. So the two output the two output ports. They are 90 degree uh, uh, sep out of phase. That is 90 degrees separated from each other. It has 90 degree phase shift because one of the the ports, uh, the signal has to travel a longer length, like what we have here. If we have, for example, this demonstrate this graph, uh, this diagram here, we have uh, input port at one, at port one. So we have output port at two and three. At uh, port four will be isolated. That is no signal is supposed to go through there. And because the at this at port one will be at a normal uh, phase, while the at port three will have a 90 degree phase shift because the signal has to travel a longer distance to get to at port three. So if antennas, for example, uh, are attached to port 3 and 4, then an input signal at V at what we, what we have here, if we have this as V1, uh, V4, uh, V3, and V2, and we have the uh, input signal here at port 1, then an input signal V1 uh, results in an output at port 2 and 3. Uh, of at, at port two, we have uh, the value, the output voltage coming out from port two will be will be the the root. Uh, we have the, the the input the voltage at uh, port one divided by root two to give us the output voltage here. So the same for the other side uh, because because they will be out of uh, ninety degree different phase difference. Uh, the output here will be the same V1 uh, divided by 2, but it will be on the negative side. So that's why when it's uh, represented, we have a minus J, is the, the imaginary aspect of it. But that's not what we are doing now. We're going to, what we want to do is do the basic calculation on how to get uh, the values to for our design. Uh, today, we'll be using uh, ADS a simulation ADS uh, from Keysight, a simulation software uh, to design our output. But before we go uh, to the ADS, uh, we need to determine our basic value. As we can see here, uh, the standard 3D, 3DB coupler has a basically, almost you say sometimes we have here to be flat, uh, because we have, they want a perfect flow signal, we can make it to be called so that there will no uh, reflection. So what we have here, uh, all this, the, the dimensions here are represented in terms of the impedance. So we have the imp impedance here to be Z and uh, Z naught. Uh, this and this, they basically have the same impedance. But at this point, and we have uh, the impedance uh, divided by root 2. So this value we have to calculate. And the, the length of the of the of the microstrip because using a micro microstrip uh, patch, the length uh, will be quarter quarter wavelength. Uh, how we get the the value in terms of uh, millimeters and others will will we'll go through uh, so for our design 
we'll be using is FRO4 substrate. Uh, we'll be designing for a 2.4 GHz frequency operating frequency. Uh, if we use if we're using 2.4 GHz uh, frequency uh, with FRO4, uh, we we'll definitely will have a wavelength of 1.25. That's if we divide our uh, speed of light over over the operating frequency. That's what that one will give us. So using the substrate type of 1.6 mm, uh, in the electric constant 4.6 and the other value. Our standard impedance uh, will be 50 ohm. We're using 50 ohm because it's basically one of the standard that almost every electronic device is used. So having gotten this, we have here, so because we have here 50 ohm, so this value now will now be 50 ohm over root 2, which we have done there to give us 35.35 ohm. So here, I've done a calculation to get the actual length of our design. Uh, so we have basically, we will have it basically in two steps. We have the, we need to find the width of this section and this section. So this I will call width 35, because we we'll use it 35 ohm, and this width 50. Uh, this is width 35. So I call this length 35, length 35, and this length 50, because this is the 50 ohm session. So have we, we proceed now. First, we calculate the 50 ohm uh, length, uh, 50 ohm line. The 50 ohm, uh, 50 ohm line. Uh, there's a standard uh, equation that you can find in any standard textbook on how to determine certain parameters. First, we have to calculate the width of any of microstrip. There are two basic equations here. Uh, the first one is for the, when the width is less than the twice the height, then we can use this first one. But if the width is greater than twice the height, uh, then we use the second one. So our substrate height here, uh, we have our substrate type that we're using uh, is 1.6 mm and we're, we're going to determine our width so if we use for the the parameter this constant here have their own equations here from which we can calculate here so if we if we're using a for example our weight is less than uh, twice the the height, then we use the first one. If we use that, we calculate uh, our a value here to be uh, putting the other values here. How this is our impedance over standard sixty. Then the uh, relative permittivity, uh, permittivity uh, we have one point five eight. So we now use that value to find our width, the 50, 50 ohm uh, impedance width to be 2.95. So having gotten that, we now proceed to determine the, the length of that 50 ohm. So for to calculate the length, we use this equation, it's a standard equation as well, and we determine the effective uh, relate, uh, uh, constant. So we use this equation to determine the dielectric constant. This is a standard equation you can find in any textbook as well. So we arrive at this value for our 50 ohm uh, length. And we do the same calculation for the 35 ohm microstrip line. And we get this. So have done that, we use the same value just like we did for the 50 ohm, we will find our the the width of our 35 ohm uh, 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 microstrip uh, line. So that is that, and we calculate the length as well. We use the same, basically the same procedure. I think I've made calculations twice here. Yeah. Okay. 
Deus, que dá meu Deus. We have width here and we have the, the length here. So for the 35 ohm, we have width here 5.07 and the length here 16.417. So now proceed now. Uh, this is our standard design parameters. We have all our calculated values here and we have the values for our design on on the on the diagram so here you know that from we have from this plot from this diagram our quarter wave is from the middle to the middle here uh, but what do this thing we are going to be using the microscript uh, ads reply that we're going to be using we have a length from here to here so in order to get our actual length because we calculated this we need to subtract this width from our calculation to get the value we'll be using we'll see that as it goes on but we've already done the calculation to get this value so we'll now proceed to design our ads so we have the ads already open we're using we can use either the schematic or the layout basically they are both the same depends on which one you prefer uh, but let's just do a simple one we'll use a schematic to design this so if we create a new one you just can give it any name you want and uh, we, we use we'll use here a uh, t-lines a uh, micro strip is part of the standard uh, mod module that you can find here so we just pick T line micro strip and put our coupler. Uh, this is what we're going to be designing. But for this particular design, we are going to do just the 90 degree curve one. We're not doing uh, this uh, this slanting angle one. So we we'll put our uh, strip line here. We need here one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, strip uh, lines and some T junction to complete our design. So we'll go here, we we'll pick M, M line, micro strip line, and we need eight, eight of feet. A one till empty line okay, to create the joint and so we make our connection. Yeah, just before we we put values in, just before we change the values, we do that now. Okay, we need to change this. So basically that's uh, how our plots look like. So here we need to put our input, we have input 1, so using 1 here, 
So now we need to change our values. Uh, but basically, what I like to do, uh, just use uh, because many of the values are the same. I like to use uh, just put a create a variable where I can define a variable. So here, I put first one say W fifty, and my W fifty line is fourteen point two seven. No, at two point nine L I like to define another two uh, for the for the L, so we shall call uh, first W fifty two. Uh, basically, I'm going to divide uh, W fifty uh, by two for this particular one. Uh, no L fifty because I'm using uh, L fifty for this this length. I need half of it here yeah, so that I don't have too long the length there. So I divide uh, L fifty now divide the L fifty divide by two. I'll do the same for L35. I only need, need for L50, no one. So if I say, okay. So what, what I'll do now for the various thing, yeah, I'm using here. For this this width like here, this this one here, two, three, four, five, six, they will all have the same width. Then this is the W35. So all I just need to do is I change this width. Uh, by the way, my my dimensions are in millimeter. I suppose to have said that, but we can just change this. So I put L W50 mm. No, I'm using W50 there. Uh, W50 because it, by which here is W50 mm. Uh, same, by this is my W1 and this is my W2 and this is my W3. So my W1 is same W50. My W3 here is same. And my W2 is the W35. So this is W35 mm. So here, I have W35 mm. And here, I have my W1. Uh, which is W because from this is my M1 is W35 and my M2 M2 and M3 are W50 and this is W 52. So I need the half of the W50 for this. That's this value here. So 
So this is the uh, same thing as this. Uh, this is ML. Uh, on this side now, uh, my uh, it has changed there. Uh, this is my W1 because it's rotated and this is my w2 and my w3 so we'll make the values w1 and w3 and 50 ml w3 and this is v35 so this one two is w35 Yeah, this is same thing as here too. W1 is yeah, yeah, it's W1 is coming from here, so it's W35. This is So we've uh, inputted now all our all our the all the width width value. So all we need to do now is put in our our length value. So here we have this is uh, yeah that's yeah i'm putting half of the w half of the 50 ohm on this so i don't have too long a length uh no no this is uh, no, not true the weight is the same with uh, here and here it's just the length all the all the 50 ohm are the same width it's just the length that varies that is different because I don't want it to be too long. So here I have L fifty two on this side. And this two. And on this session, one, two, three, four, I have here will be L50. Oh no, this is L50, not two now, because it's the normal length, and this two. Yeah, we have, there was W50 as well. The same thing as there and this we have l35 yeah, we need to to check to make sure with all our values are as supposed to be but if just in case we can always come back to make correction so this is what we have. What we'll now do, we'll now go to the menu. On top, we'll find a simulate uh, layout. If we click this, it give us to generate or update our layout. Uh, on this place, we can now create a layout of what we what we're designing. So if we click here, millimeter, and we'll click finish because we want our design in millimeter. So we'll click on Finish. They will, this will create a, a layout, a layout for us, which basically is a PCB layout. Just wait to be created soon. It's okay, it's little. It's not, it will be longer now. It's unusual. It's going up so slow. 
So this is our layout. We just go here and we'll take out this. Oh, we we'll think we we'll missed something here. It's not quite what it should be. Ah, okay, maybe I, I did fix pull that in. So we we'll go back and see what we did wrong. Yeah, we didn't define our L35. Ah, uh, okay. We have with 50. Oh, we didn't define our L35 there. So we, our L35 was 14.94, which we did not define, but we use it there. We have I-35 here, but it's not defined here. Ah, okay, we we'll call this, this was not L2, it was L35. Yeah, that's why. Because our L35 is 14.94. So if we update our layout, we should have the correct layout now. Yeah. So this is our layout now. I will wish looks okay. So next stage, what we have to do now, we need to set up an EM simulation parameters. So to do that, that EM simulation parameter includes our operating frequency and the substrate we'll be using. So to do that, We'll go to here EM 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 setup EM solution setup or we can go to substrate editor to create our substrate but let's just go through the EM simulator so we have everything in one place. To create a new one. Here we have our layout which is done. Partitioning. Now we have our substrate giving us uh, info here, telling us that substrate is not defined yet. So to define a substrate, we just cl uh, click on substrate here, so that we'll be on the substrate sub menu here. So we we'll create the, if we have substrate defined before, it will be here. But since here is empty, we we'll create a new one. So for this design. Uh, this is how our source will look like, but we need to change to our own design parameters. So what we do, we click here, because here is defined, uh, the default one is aluminum uh, with 9.6 AR. So we click there, and we change this, because we are using FR4, uh, that's what, if what we are using is not there, we we'll go to database and look for it. So we're using FR4 4.6 with 0 0.018 tan tan day. So if we click on this and we click OK, it will be added here. Oh, we just need this OK here. They will now come to the box here and search for our FR4. That's the one we just added. The next thing we'll do is we are designing for 1.6 mm uh, a substrate height. So we now ch change this thickness to 1.6 and make sure our uh, our uh, is a is a millimeter uh, dimension. So have we defined this now? All we just need to do we save it and it will be recognized here. Yeah. See that, that the info, this thing, warning sign is gone. So our substrate is here as defined. So that's done. The next thing now is we, we define our frequency uh, plan. Uh, for this design, we we'll design it for a 2.4 gigahertz operating frequency. So we we'll define this, say maybe 1.8 uh, to a range of 1.8 to 3. And we have we have a reasonable uh, a reasonable frame uh, for our simulation to run. Uh, we also define our output plan just in case we want to see uh, the frequency, the heat, 
the current distribution on the surface. Then if we simulate this, So that's our design equation. But here, we are only interested in two things for now. That's our amplitude, amplitude. Yeah, we can see that our S, par S parameter here for, yeah, we have one one, S one one. So we're interested in S21. Yeah, this is our design parameter here. Our, our plot, our result, uh, simulation result of our plot. You can see that we have a 2.4, uh, which is this parameter 2.4, which is fair enough. Then we can add our phase as well to see. Uh, what the phase uh, difference are. So what we just do, we click here, a rectangular plot, and add a new rectangular plot. So we want to find the the phases. And we're using, looking for because we use the output ports uh, for two and three. So we go for phase of S one two or S two one. We'll add this and face off S31. And add this. So we'll upload this. Yeah, we can have a 3D view of our design by clicking. Yeah. So we'll see how our design looks in 3D. Also, we can do a look at the path feed distribution, the current distribution. Yeah, but first, let's see a 3D view of our design. We're just loading up. It's taking a little bit of time. So this is how our design looks like in 3D. So we have our patch our on top, and this is our substrate. And we can just do everything here. And this is just the 3D view. It does the, the substrate. We are looking at it from so 
So that's our three days here. Uh, we can also look at the uh, current distribution and uh, watch how uh, using the EM uh, Yeah, this is a far feed uh, distribution of our patch, and here we have the the, the coupler with the various ports. Uh, we can look at, for example, at 2.4 gigs how the current distribution is. Uh, if we allow current through port one, then I will go to plot properties. If we go on animate, we will see how the current is flowing. You see, current is uh, coming in through here, uh, being distributed. See that this is uh, this comes faster, and that one comes like a bit later because it's ninety degrees out of phase as per this. So from here too, we can look at our antenna and at the parameters. And this is just basically uh, normally for antenna design. Uh, but since we're using patch and uh, momentum, then we can visualize how all this all this is. If we, for example, we change to port two, uh, this is our port two. You see now that the current is now flowing from here. Uh, the, the tree is isolated. If we use port 4, the port 1 is now isolated. We see current distribution on this side. So basically, uh, that's uh, our coupler design for you. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you like our video. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.